the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cardinals and the Bears. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. Now the good news is that the winds aren't as violent as they were yesterday in Chicago, but it's still pretty darn cold to be expected, I guess, for December football at Soldier Field. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Chicago Bears. With my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, the Chicago Bears, they come off a tough year at 3-14, and 14, the most losses in franchise history. What can they look to build around here in 2023? Well, it starts with their quarterback, and you know that he is a heck of a player for them, but they've got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Head coach, defensive background, he's trying to amass that kind of talent and become the monsters of the midway once again. And for the visiting Cardinals, you know, this is a team in flux a little bit. J.J. Watt retired. There's a new coaching staff in place. They've got some work to do to turn around what was a 4-13 campaign in 2022. I remember this franchise won 11 games in 2021, but everything's new now. Head coach, the way they're going to run things on offense, style of play on defense, but sometimes that change can be really good. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, now to do the honors, and off we go here at Soldier Field. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Well, the Cardinals offense set to take over for the first time, and they are piloted by their fifth-year quarterback, two-time Pro Bowler as well, Kyler Murray. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together, We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 13 yards on the game's opening play. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second and nine. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he takes this all the way down to the Bears' 33. It's a gain of 35. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school, and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They've worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much longer. And they've established a great balance so far, running, passing, doing what they want on offense. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. Second and ten. Murray a give. This is Connor. 
And he'll get this one down to about the 17. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Here's Murray. And he fins him off. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Oh, man. Just when the D thought they had the answer for him, he went and changed the question. Surprises him by taking off himself. He's able to set up his offense pretty with a first and goal. Throwing now is Murray. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Murray now to throw. Touchdown, Cardinals! Kyler Murray fighting Marquise Brown. And the Cardinals are on the board first here this afternoon. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Now Matt Prater from the point after. And the Cardinals will go up 7 to nothing. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Hollywood, Marquise Brown, who finishes it off with the touchdown. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Here's a second and two now from the 33. One play action. Fields. And he hits his target, the tight end Lewis. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown game. Beating him there with his legs, 21 yards, first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. 
They run with a former Panther. It's Deontay Foreman. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's Fields now on second down. He's got the connection to Moore. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 16. A good pick up there, 22. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Back to throw. Fields. Touchdown! Cole Komet from eight yards out. And the Bears are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Give him a couple on the scramble, it's second down. Only a short game there, but that's okay if you're the offense. They brought a lot of pressure at him, and he uses athleticism to at least get back to the line and make second down a lot shorter than it was looking for a moment. Here's a second and eight. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And he can't get rid of it, he's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. Back deep, Trent Taylor. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 
That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that. And when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. Red, and all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Now second and five. They run again with Foreman. Oh, fighting off the defender. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Third down and one. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This will be a critical call. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Greg George, deep for Arizona. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. And the Cards will take over, first and 10. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Hollywood Brown, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. To throw, it's Murray. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. So far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Murray going to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Blake Gilligan on a punt here as he'll send this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. The drive starts with Foreman on the ground. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you can have at that position. And sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Fields. Well, throw here right sideline. 
falls incomplete. Darnell Mooney, the target there. And it's second down. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. So here's a third and 14. Now it's Fields. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Now here's Trent and Gill on to punt. Fair catch, single four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. and the Cardinals with a first and 10 right at the 30. He'll start the drive with a game to counter. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. These two teams all tied after one. Cardinal football here to start quarter number two as they are looking at a second and five situation. Now Murray. Flush to his right. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. They made a nice effort to stick it with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Murray now on first down. And that is incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as he made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Now is second and ten. Murray now. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, they'll throw with Murray. Pass to the right, and he's got the bride. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 45-yard line. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 
Here's Murray. Goes right back to McBride. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route. Able to look it in and picks up the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw is Murray. A short one here caught by McBride. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Murray to air it out again. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Screen pass to Connor. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. Prater's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Prater now will send it away following the main field goal. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Back to throw here. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. He'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. To throw his fields. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Tried to create a little bit of that hocus pocus with some magic, but the defense, not impressed at all. They don't lose contain on this very dangerous runner, and they get a big stop. Here comes the Bears punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there. On the return, Dorch. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. And the Cardinals' great field position to start this drive as they take over first and 10. 
James Conner and the Cardinal offense ready to get back to work. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. He's got it to the 43 here. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Second and six. Here's Murray. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on third down. I have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. From the gun, Murray. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Off the option, here's Murray running left. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Now second and nine. Connor up the middle. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 11. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Javon Dexter coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. A third and long, he knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Fourth down, Murray off, and the Cards field goal unit and Matt Prater out there now. He made his first attempt, this from 45. Prater's kick is good, and the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Prater now will send it away following the main field goal. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Now we're going to get a stoppage here as we've got an injured Cardinal on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. 
from the 31. Here's second and a couple. Field's going to keep it once more. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good chunk on the ground, and the keeper, 17 yards, first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it, but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing. Fields hit and the ball is loose. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Now pounced right back on it, keeps possession. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Now Fields. That'll be caught by Foreman. Touchdown, Chicago! Deontay Foreman, 43 yards! And the Bears are an extra point away from capturing the lead. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. A wheel route? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they zip out on the sideline, You've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. To the touchdown. Here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. And Greg Dorch now to return it. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From the 29, here's second and two. Murray now to throw. He's going deep for Brown. And that's caught inside the 30. A huge play there for Arizona. 45 yards. He scored their touchdown earlier, and this had a chance to be another. This secondary scrambling for answers, looking at each other, trying to figure out who is going to put the clamps on this guy because right now he's absolutely shredding them. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Throwing now is Murray. That's complete to his running back, Carter. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, 
I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling. Held it to an okay game. On second down, here's Murray. He'll get that one complete to Connor. So the completion good for six yards. And this will wind up being a third and three. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And that is incomplete. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. And he is caught. And he is going to have the Cardinals first down as he's brought to the ground after a gain of seven, five more than he needed on fourth and two. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Shotgun now from Murray. Out to the right here to Wilson. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. A game of four. It's now second and six at the seven-yard line. And now they're in the hurry up. Throwing again, Murray. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And the 39-year-old veteran puts it right through, and they have regained the lead. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here in a tight two-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. Both of these offenses had their share of high points in that first half. Each team had some big moments, and it would seem this could turn out to be a game where the last score wins. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point.
The Bears going to see the football first, and they trail here as we get back underway to start this second half. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. And they'll start out here with a jet sweep. Breaks the tackle, now an alley. And a great job there to lead that one defensively. They strung him out, would not allow him to cut up field. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And this will be a Bears first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Again, it's Foreman to the 43, second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. From the 43, here's second down and seven. Back to throw, Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That time they pick up a 24 yards on the keeper. First down. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. Mooney, the motion man right. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. What a great read by the secondary. They come up to stop that touch pass before it can even get back to the line. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, they, maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. second half you get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone i'd say most defensive coaches would think pass let's bring some pressure so this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground and he'll take it all the way into the end zone santos with the extra point and the lead is up to five so that winds up a seven play drive all told and it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. 
And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They start with a give to Connor. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. Right back to Connor here on first. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. This is second and eight. To throw, it's Murray. That's complete to McBride. Two yards on the pickup there, and it brings up third and five now. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Here is third and five. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 45-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. On first and 10 is counter. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. This second and four. Murray now. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now Murray. And this is going to be incomplete. So many offense want to put their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And that is no good. And this will remain a five-point game. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try to run for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. The Chicago offense set to get started, and it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Foreman takes it, headed right. 
And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. 52 yards rushing for him now to this point. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. But we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit. But how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical downhill running. And they run the option here on first and ten. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Beating him there with his legs. 21 yards, first down. And if you're keeping an eye on the box score, that last run puts him over the 100-yard mark for the game. And this defense has just had all sorts of trouble trying to keep him under wraps, both passing and running. On first and ten, here's Fields. That is caught by Herbert. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. They'll run here with Foreman. This offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those Mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Santos able to tack on the extra point and it gives his guys a 12 point advantage. Touchdown. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Glad you're with us from Soldier Field in Chicago. Third quarter here, second and ten. They run behind center with Connor. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. 
70 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Murray going to throw. Screen pass to Connor. And he won't get to the marker. He's a yard short. A pickup of three and leaves him with fourth and one. Yeah, and on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play to force fourth down. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. But Deontay Foreman and his offense back out there. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. And credit Chris Barnes rushing in there and hitting him for a loss. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. On second down, here's Fields. Looking deep here for Mooney. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Absolutely no disguise on that one. They just went for it. Put him out there and said, go deep. Let's try and hit him. Unfortunately, to no avail. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Fields. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. The sack goes to Chris Barnes. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And here comes Dorch on the return. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 45. To throw is Murray. This will be caught downfield by Moore. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. They started this drive with terrific field position, and it's going to get even better after that play. Had great options with where they started, so they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. From the gun, again to counter. Yeah, a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Now second and three. Here's Murray. He'll dump this one off to Connor. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Four yards the pick up, first down. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Connor. Powers passed him at the five. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. 
Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Cardinal football, but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter. Connor going to get it again on second down. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. James Connor, a three yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals have made it a one score game again here in the fourth. You think about James Conner down near the goal line, and you think about the 2021 season with his 15 touchdown runs. He believes he's as good as anybody down close, and he powers his way in here. Crater on and the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So that drive spanned five plays, and it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Start by running the option to the right. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. But that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Off play action. Fields rolling to his left. the 43-yard line. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. These are running back numbers that he's accumulating right now. Received double-digit carries and has rewarded them by breaking the century mark and rushing, in addition to what he's done through the air. Definitely MVP caliber football we're witnessing. They run it on first for Foreman. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Now an option play on second down. A determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. So that run play nullified by the holding call of the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Here's Fields now on second down. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's more. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. We know play callers can be very creative in this game today, but sometimes when they've got receivers with speed like this, they don't need to design incredibly complex calls. Sometimes it's just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. In a sense, less can become more, and it was right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And this is a rarity in the NFL, a 100-yard game on the ground for a quarterback. Even as those passers get more athletic and mobile, we only see about five of these a season. 
takes a special set of circumstances for it to happen. And of course, a special player. Here's Fields. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. When in doubt, do it yourself as he keeps it for three and a first down. It's getting cold in here, partner, because it looks like he's trying to ice this one away. Yeah, I know, bad dad joke, but what the heck, right? Scrambling for that first after the D blanketed his receivers, that's a backbreaker for the defense. They finish this drive off with six, and this one could be over. Foreman. Going to be stopped before he can get moving forward as he'll lose a couple back to the five-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And as this drive began, the offense had to be thinking touchdown, knowing the situation. Even after that loss, touchdown still on their minds. This is a one-possession game. A field goal doesn't do them a whole lot of good. Now they bring a receiver in motion right. Foreman's going to get it again on second down. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. We all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line. They think they're going to find a way into the end zone. He hasn't had that kind of luck so far. Ends up not getting in on the last two carries. You know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity. Now Fields on third and goal. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So decision time now, because a field goal keeps it a one-score game. What are you thinking? Well, I'm looking at the down and distance, and that's where the issue comes in. It's not short enough that it's a no-brainer and you go for it. You have to analyze this one. To me, you take the field goal, take the points. I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. Santos' kick is up and through, and that'll push the lead up to eight. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And remember, despite giving up the field goal, this is still a one-score game. They're in need of the touchdown and a two-point conversion. A field goal on this drive likely doesn't do them much good. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Throwing now is Murray. And that, oh, nearly picked off. Well, it would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Murray again, second and 10. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. So well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. Here's Murray. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was right for the taking. 
Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. From the gun on third down, Murray. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Just because you got the lead in the fourth, it doesn't mean you have to play it safe. I like the aggressive play call there to push it downfield. That time, it didn't work out. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Taylor now returning it. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added on to their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. A run by Foreman to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it. But what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stack box and continue to move the ball? Play action. It's Fields. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. Oh, one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Here's a handoff to Connor. Shoves him aside. Still going. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. 106 yards rushing now for Connor and a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The run defense, they have been porous at times today, but not that last go around. No, they really tightened it up, didn't they? They finally got themselves a win because all game long we've seen them get gashed. This time they played their responsibilities, played their keys, and made a nice stop. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. Murray now to throw. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Jackson. And the Bears are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. But when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. So what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with a give to Foreman. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. 
Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, four quarters, hours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. But they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Now give to Foreman. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Foreman will try to pick it up. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Should have given Foreman. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. Here's second and ten. They run again with Foreman. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Here's Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. They snap it to Fields. And this is caught. He hits Moore. And he's going to have the Bears first. And that should be the capital. Ten yards is the pickup there. And that should just about put a bow on this one. A gutsy decision there going for it on fourth. But they got it, and that likely puts an end to this one. Indeed, it was gutsy because there's so many other options they probably could have exercised in that situation. 
but they bet on themselves and it paid off. So it's the Bears who come away with a victory, and that's thanks largely to the play of their quarterback, Justin Fields, CD. Yeah, the numbers don't jump off the page, but he was a steady influence back there. He had a couple of touchdown passes on the afternoon. His guys rallied around him, and they're going to come away victorious. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.